Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow, Dow, and Dow Industrials. Where is she? Uh, there we go. Dow Industrials right now are trading. Sorry about this, folks. Up 13. Nasdaq up 16. S and P's up seven and a half. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Teddy Cakes. That as we do each and every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. You can reach Teddy every trading day, folks, at forex-trading-unlock.com. That's forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Cakes, that what's going on? Well, we got some nice moves shaping up in the currencies to start the first trading, the full trading week of the year off, I think. That, that's for sure. Huh? How about last night? Holy cow. I mean. Right. Well, was... the Middle Eastern thing is fueling it, right? Yes. No, no, no doubt. You know, no doubt. So where do we want to start, Teddy? Um, I think you want to start with the euro and the pound. Uh, okay. We have uh, the Brexit deadline that's coming up on January 31st. And uh, the pound, I think, is going to be a scary trade. I think it's going to be a range, tra range trader's delight and a swing trader's nightmare as we head into uh, January 31st. I think it's going to be a very tight, winding trade, and it doesn't matter what's going on in the Middle East. Um, but the euro-US dollar hit some key support. We had a big sell signal in the euro-US dollar last week, and we just touched our uh, the top of our target range. There might be a little bit more to go. I think that uh, because of the Brexit issue, the euro is going to start to get really tight. And also with high oil prices, it's going to be really hard to break the euro as well. Yeah, interesting, man. And then, I mean, the yen last night went ballistic, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, absolutely. It, what, what happened, folks, is that it, all the, you know, not all the indices, but gold, oil, uh, yen, it totally makes sense. The yen, you know, bottom, bottom line got down to uh, 107, yeah, 107.65 and then just shook it off too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Yeah, now it's two dollars higher. Yes. Or a do full two dollar pens, higher. Yeah, yeah no, I, it's pretty intense, man. There's no doubt about it. Absolutely. You know? yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, we've been talking about how, you know, with the dollar index, when it was under pressure, yes. the U.S. dollar yen would still rally. And now you have the dollar index finding some support. So it kind of gives lift, lift again to this market. It's hard to break it down. It is. I mean, you know, so when you look when you look at this index, folks, so, you know, the number I'm keeping my eye on is 97,141 here, 97,147. So you're jumping back in the higher range again, you know? Mm -hmm. And we'll see whether it can hold. I mean, I expect the broad market today, as well as these currencies, to have more volatility than normal. I mean, because most times what I've sure. seen is that when you get a night like last night, people think it's calm and, and cool. And, and it is at this particular point, but my take right. is that we're not going to stay calm and cool because it's right. that, this is a nervous market, man. You know. Right. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting is that the U.S. dollar is getting a big lift against the, uh, like the Japanese yen right now and also against the Canadian dollar. And the Swiss is actually, it's trying to, I think it's pretty much unchanged on the day right now. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's pretty much unchanged. So, but the, uh, those are the ones where you're seeing the most movement. And that's why I think that it's amazing how with this turmoil in the Middle East, how the market can really shrug this off and pretty much absorb it because it seems like the pound and the EU and the, uh, the euro rather are more concerned about their brexit deadline than they are about the middle east yeah that's 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 interesting man and i guess you know you, you explained it to us last week i mean this has been quite a move in the swiss franc right i mean yes you know it's what well, we're 9702 mm -hmm. and it's like that's the that's the lower end of this range right I mean, Absolutely. Yeah. And that kind of goes with, remember how we're looking for a little upside correction in the dollar? This was before yes. the, this whole thing launched in the Middle East. Right. We were looking for a dollar rally. So they kind of fundamentally and technically line up. And then we had all those signals that were triggered last week, remember, for corrective moves yes. in the euro and all these other things. So you yeah, had to see that the, the dollar index get up to that 97 half area, even 98 even. That's very likely, I think, over the next week or two. Man, there's a lot of moving parts in this marketplace, man. I mean, right. yeah, there's there's no doubt. And, and then get ready for the next drop. <laughs> yeah, I listen. I think I, I think I, long I term for now, sure. It, what what I've found more than anything is that I'm looking for at least a test of even last night. When you get spikes like that, the bottom line, they love to go visit their friends, man. <laughs> right. It's just a matter right. of when they do it. Uh, you know, and I remember even, you know. They, folks thought when that flash crash came in, I don't know, about 10 years ago, they thought it'd never get revisited. It got revisited. It's mm -hmm. When those things happen, they just like to get revisited. Um, right. It is what it is. I don't know if it's a technical, sure. fundamental issue, but uh, they, they like hanging out, no doubt. Mm -hmm. 
you know, it's there is some interesting moves in the um, some of the more exotics like the pound euro trade and the yeah. Swiss euro. The Swiss is actually a very strong currency right now. So I think even if the U.S. dollar Swiss gets this nice little bounce, which we're kind of talking about right now, I think overall the U.S. dollar is going to take a dive against the Swiss over the next like five six months. Yeah. No. It's listen. It's you know we'll see where this shakes out. I mean, I, my take is that we broke that longer term trend in the dollar, and that's a. 18 month trend. So that's quite a trend. And what does right. happen, folks, every time that you try to test this higher area, which the dollar is doing out here today, if it makes it, it makes it. But if it doesn't make it, that's another indication. You know, you test, you test, you test. We've already tested it twice. It's failed twice. We'll see, you know, what ends up happening here. And, you know, it just lines up the supply versus the demand, right? I mean, right. Yeah. Uh, so that's where the really basic fundamentals come in line there. Yes. No doubt. And I, I guess, right. you know, in our case, <laughs> I mean, you know, if we went back, you know, 10 years, uh, Teddy, I mm -hmm. mean, everyone was worried about the deficit. Now, right. any, any, I, I don't think I can find, can find a conservative fiscal in our government. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. I mean, you Absolutely. know, the, the bottom line, folks, is that, you know, on the Internet, if you can rewind some of these things, and you can, folks, okay, I mean, if Ten years ago, you know, everyone's worried about, yeah, we have too much debt. Well, it, the printing presses have never stopped, and they've exploded higher. You know? mm -hmm. And sometimes when even, you know, I hear even other analysts say that, well, this can't go on forever. Sometimes I think, well, why can't it? <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? You, you actually what said mean? something that's really interesting there, Tommy. You've been, you, you're the, the big equity guy. And think about this. Remember, like, when the, there was the crash of 29? There was only the Dow. Right. Okay. In right. 1987, there was the S&P 500. Right. Now you have these multiple indexes, multiple industries. We have the aerospace industry alone that could dwarf everything in history as far as the stock market's concerned. So every other business could collapse. We could have a total like depression going on, and the stock market might elevate to levels we've never ever even thought of. That's interesting. Yeah. No. I listen to that. You know. No. For sure. There's no doubt, and that's where. You know, if, if inflation is creeping in, uh, that's mm -hmm. where you absolutely can have higher numbers, even though folks, you know, bottom line, aren't making what they made. If I learned anything when that whole Zimbabwe <laughs> deal happened, I remember us watching that Zimbabwe stock market, folks. Before their currency collapsed, the stock market went to the moon. And then, of course, when it collapsed, it went even higher. But that was a lesson, mm -hmm. I think, for anyone, right? You know, right. A, a number is basically arbitrary you know it's what that number can buy you right more than anything right you know? otherwise you have you know the depression like you had in germany in between world war one and world war two yeah pretty intense man well listen folks so. you know uh our man uh, teddy if you've missed teddy teddy uh did a couple of dave shows last week they were fabulous shows teddy we really appreciate it man thanks a lot those were fun okay man you have a great one safe one of course we look forward to speaking to next wednesday Take care. Thank you, man. Stay right there, folks. Tommy and I are coming right back. We have the Dow right now. Let's see. Dow's up six. NASDAQ's flat. S&P's up four and a half. We'll come right back.